Hey, welcome back to Diode Press. I'm Graham. So over the past year or so, I've had the chance to work with John over at NYC CNC on a couple of different projects. And there's another one that I'm working on today. So the last project I worked on was this giant woodcut print. And for that project, I ended up running a studio space that had a large enough press that I could actually do the printing on because my small press just wouldn't handle that. So we've been talking about doing another edition of prints and that's what I'm working on today. So his initial idea was gonna be something involving the Arduino microcontroller. And it's something that both of us use a lot. So I was really into the idea. And then from that point on, it just kind of grew. So I'll have links down in the description box to his site where you can pick up this print that I'm making today or the larger woodcut that I made a few months ago. So for this project, the end result's gonna be an addition of 25 numbered prints. And I sent those along to John. And then I have a few artist proofs, which I'll be keeping for my collection. And so as a kind of a thank you for watching the videos and supporting this channel, I'm gonna be giving away one of those prints to a viewer of this video. So just stick around till the end of the video and I'll have all the details of how you can win. And if you wanna help support Diode Press, you can check out the shop where I have lots of artwork, stickers, zines, and things like that. So thank you so much for watching and subscribing. I really do appreciate it. And let's jump right into the project. Like I mentioned, the idea for this commission was to feature an Arduino microcontroller. So I started out looking at the pile of them I have over on my desk and created a handful of sketches. I tried to catch the character of the thing, but keep it somewhat loose and abstracted, rather than try to render all the details and individual components. The background details are gonna be blind embossed rather than printed with ink, but we'll get into that part later. I'm using cherry ply for this project. It's a thick piece of New England black cherry mounted onto a Baltic birch base. I try and highlight different ways to do things in my videos since there's so many different ways, but to transfer this print, I'm using a fresh photocopy of my artwork and then acetone nail polish remover to make the transfer. Check out some of my other videos for less toxic and different ways to make a transfer. I took this opportunity to clean up my drawing a bit as it was on the block, fixing some of the angles and adjusting a few details before I started diving into the carving. A wash of diluted black ink tones the block and lets me see what I'm carving. I'm using a bench hook to keep the block from sliding, and then I can really dig in and clear out the big areas. And I have a video about how to make one of these bench hooks. For the details, I'm using an angled knife tool to cut along the lines, and then cutting from the other direction creates a nice clean edge that'll hold up to the pressure of a press. I'm not trying to make an exact replica of an Arduino. I mean, you could just take a picture of that if you wanted, but I'm trying to keep the character of a woodcut in the piece. Now that I'm done carving, I'm making a print by hand just to make sure I'm happy with all the carving and doing any cleanup that's required. The background of this print is gonna be from a lino block. To get my image onto it, I'm using the inkjet transfer method. This is a sheet of sticker paper with all the stickers removed so basically it's just a waxy sheet of paper. And you only have really one shot per page, but when you line it up and burnish the paper, it creates a nice transfer onto the block. I'm gonna be blind embossing, which is printing without any ink and basically forcing the paper into the carved marks. I needed to do some testing on scraps to make sure my carving was deep enough and wide enough and test out different pressures. Now that I know all that, I can start carving.
I'm using Hanamule printmaking paper, which is very thick, strong paper, and it'll let me get a really nice, deep embossing. Traditionally, I tear my paper down to size, but there's no rules, so in this case I'm cutting it to size so I get the nice clean edges. I'm working on a new registration system, and it requires using a three-hole punch on the edges of the paper. I'm reinforcing the edge with tape since this paper is going to be soaked in water. I'll be creating a separate video all about this registration jig, so keep an eye out for that. But this prototype has magnets that let it stick to my press bed, allowing me to keep it in place, and then drop my block right on it. I've been soaking the paper for 45 minutes, so it softens up the fibers and allows them to be pushed into the lino block. I'm blotting them off so there's no excess water to ruin the wood base that the lino block's mounted on. Now I can line up my registration holes onto the base and then run the print. I have a piece of newsprint on top of my paper and then a felt to help squeeze the paper into the block. And here's the first step of this print done. Keep in mind when you soak paper and then run it through a press, it's gonna stretch. And the paper in this case ended up being longer and a little bit narrower than when I began. So you have to keep this in mind when you're cutting down your paper. And also when doing multiple plate prints that you need to register one layer on top of another. And there's ways to avoid this, including calendaring the paper, but we'll talk about that another time. I was really excited to do the final printing of this project. It's my first time using Speedball's new professional relief ink. So this is the Super Graphic Black by Bill Fick. And you might remember I printed that last large woodcut over at the Super Graphic Print Lab. And the folks over at Super Graphic are all great and I can't really say enough good things about what they do over there. I was given this can of ink on my recent tour of the Speedball factory, try it out. And you can check out that tour and I'll put a link in the description box. So I'm gonna be doing a full standalone video about this ink soon. But my honest opinion so far is that I absolutely love it. And here's the final print. The embossing is a bit hard to show up in video, but hopefully it comes through okay here. The final step is going to be to cut off the excess strips of paper that I use for registering the prints onto the jig, and then signing and numbering the edition. Maybe it's just me, but I always use a scrap of paper to help make sure my title and signature fall in the same spot on all my prints in the edition. Not that anyone would ever have more than one print to be able to know that. I've also gotten into the habit of adding some information on the back of prints. Often you can't read an artist's signature. And if the print ever gets sold or given away later down the road, this will let the new owner know who and when it was made. Finally, I can package them up and send them along to John. Alright, so that was a really fun project. It was a lot more work than I thought to get the kind of the embossing to look how I wanted, but I think it came out really nice in the end. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, so this print, as well as the large woodcut I did a few months ago, are both available over in John's shop. And so I'll link to them down below. But let's go into the giveaway for this print. I'll have the full details down in the description box, but it's really pretty simple. So it's only open to US residents just for shipping simplicity. In the future, I hope to open it up to international when I do these giveaways, and I'm hoping to do them as I do you know, more print projects. So to enter, all you have to do is if you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe to the channel, and then just leave a comment down below, and then that's it. So after 30 days from when I publish this video, I'll pick a random winner from the comments down below, and then I'll give that person 30 days to respond to my message with their mailing address, if I don't hear back, I'll go ahead and pick a new winner. And that's it. So just subscribe, leave a comment, random winner. And of course, I do appreciate if you share the videos or you know, thumbs up and things like that. Those are always great. Unfortunately, I only have one of these prints to give away, but thanks to everyone for the continued support on the channel. And I'll be doing more of these giveaways in the future. Make sure to head over to the shop and see some of the other work I have posted up there. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.